come to the end of our journey through the book of Revelation and we get to these glorious chapters, Revelation 21 and 22, showing us where history is headed. In the world to come, God's redeemed people are going to enjoy an intimate relationship with God. We will be with Him forever. They're glorious chapters to be digging through. As always, take some time to read through the chapters and familiarize yourself with, with the pictures that John sees here. Some key context just to keep in mind, and it might be worth reading this again, is uh, Revelation chapters 2 and 3. In those two chapters with the seven letters to the churches, we are constantly um, heard the chorus to those who are victorious or to those who overcome, talking to those who make it to the end, still trusting in Jesus. And these chapters also um, show us why it's worth being among the victorious ones, why it's worth overcoming. Before we dig in, just stop and pray, ask God to help you to understand uh, this part of his word, and let me highlight some of what we see here. Central to this final picture, we see a new heavens, because the first heaven had passed away. This new heaven is this new city that we see is coming down out of heaven. We see that repeated twice. Coming down out of heaven from God. And what is it, this new heaven? How is it pictured for John? Well, it's the holy city, the new Jerusalem. This really is central to this whole big section. So in focus through this big section is this holy city, the new Jerusalem. This is what God's people have been waiting for, longing to be in this place. But very importantly, we see that it's coming out of heaven from God. And the key thing we see, more than just seeing this new Jerusalem, what makes this new Jerusalem so amazing is that God's dwelling place is now going to be with the people. He will dwell with them. Their God is going to be with them forever. So this holy city, the new Jerusalem, is also spoken of as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. Uh, we see there again the bride. Right at the end, the bride, who is a picture of God's people, um, calling out, saying, come, waiting for the Lord Jesus to come. And so we see in this as well the Lamb, so it's the wife of the Lamb. So the church, God's people, is pictured as um, coming as a bride, beautifully dressed. The Lamb, Jesus, has done everything necessary to prepare her for this day. Up in verse 3, we see this loud voice saying, Look, God's dwelling place is with people. Um, we see that actually again in verse 5. Um, our translation, or this translation, doesn't have the word here, behold. It's that same word, look. What are we looking for? What we see here, he says, look, I am coming soon. This is Jesus saying he's coming. See it again, look. And to this whole big picture, the bride, the spirit and the bride say, come. This whole picture should grow our longing for the day when the Lord God comes to, to dwell among his people. And when he dwells with his people, he, he will wipe every tear from our eyes. It's going to be a glorious place. No more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain for the old order of things. 
has passed away. That's a day we're longing for. In John's Gospel, we hear Jesus saying, I am the water of life. And in this picture, we, we hear that the water of life is going to be given to God's people. In chapter, end of 21 and into 22, uh, we get this picture that looks a lot like the Garden of Eden. Um, Eden, we know, was... Um, there were two rivers there and this picture is picking up that a picture like that the the water of life and we also see the tree of life in this garden as this picture of the holy city is elaborated on we see that on the gates of the city the names of the 12 tribes of israel are written and then the foundations have the names of uh, the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So this is God's Old Testament people and his New Testament people. Um, the bride of the Lamb is a picture of all of the faithful ones. Those who have, um, as we see in chapters 2 and 3, who have been victorious, who have overcome, who have made it to the end, still trusting Jesus. They are there. As we look at this City, 12,000 stadia, that's about 2,200 kilometers. In John's day, that is a world-dominating city. Even in our day, that's a world-dominating city. But again, just remember that Revelation is just giving us pictures to try and comprehend the, the glory of this place. And it's glorious, again, because God is there. And some of the wonderful things that we see um, in this big picture that John gives us is that he says, I did not see a temple. Remember in the Old Testament, the temple was the place where the glory of the Lord had filled that place. And that was the place where God's people could point and say, look, our God is with us. Where in a much better sense, now God himself is dwelling among the people. They didn't need to go to the temple um, because the Lord God and the Lamb are the temple. And the Lord God is the one giving light. As Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And here we see that fulfilled. God's people are dwelling with God and God is giving light and Jesus is the lamp here. Um, we see as well that the, the city gates will never be shut. And that's a really wonderful thing. There's no need to fear anything. Gates are shut to keep danger out where there's no danger here. This whole picture we're told here, these words are trustworthy and true. These are words that we can and should listen to. We must listen to these words. This is what is going to keep us going till the end. These wonderful words from Jesus. And throughout this section, we are told a few things that we should be doing during these last days. You see here it says, blessed is the one who keeps the words of the scroll. Um, this scroll, I take as meaning not just Revelation, but the whole of God's word. We need to keep these words while we're waiting for Jesus to come. We need to worship God. Our lives should be lived as lives of worship. In Daniel, Daniel was given a prophecy and he was told to seal it up because it was about the distant future. Where Here we see the absolute opposite. John is told, don't seal up the words of this prophecy. This is good news that needs to be made known. So keep these words. Worship God. Don't seal up this. Continue to live holy lives. As we, as we cry out, come Lord Jesus, we should be living lives that uh, are worthy of him. As his spirit does his work in us, he makes us more and more like Jesus. 
Um, see, those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb become more and more holy. So we are to keep these words, worshiping God. Don't seal these words up. So that's a call to evangelism. Make this good news known. Live holy lives all while we say, come. Come, Lord Jesus. Revelation leaves us in no doubt. The, the great end time battle of God does not lie in the future. It lies in the past. Jesus, by his death and resurrection, has conquered. And as a consequence, God's kingdom is now a present reality. We are part of God's kingdom, but we are waiting for that day when the kingdom is fully and finally established. And until then, we need to keep God's words, listening to him, worshipping him, telling these words to others while we cry out, come Lord Jesus, come. And we can know for sure that Jesus will come because he's come already. He came to deal with sin and death and the devil and he will come again to bring his children home. And until that day, we cry out, come Lord Jesus. So as you dig into this section further, I pray that it would be a great joy for you and delighting in this truth. And as you teach it to others, um, help them to see the wonder of what we have, this great future promise when God will come and dwell among his people, when he will wipe every tear from our eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. The old order of things has passed away. God will be our temple. We will have free access to him. He will give us light. He will give us protection. He will give us the water of life. In this new Jerusalem, there will be the tree of life. And the leaves of that tree are for the healing of the nation. No longer will there be any curse. The curse that messed up this first creation will be no more. And there won't even be the possibility of a curse. If you want to um, look further at this picture, you can go and read Isaiah 65. In Isaiah 65, we are given this incredible prophecy and here in, in these chapters, we see that prophecy being fulfilled. And in that prophecy, it says, you won't even have a memory of all the bad things. There won't be any curse. We won't even remember that curse. There won't be a possibility of uh, people rebelling against God again. Because we will fully and finally be with him rejoicing in his goodness to us. So as you dig further into this section, I pray that it would be a great joy for you and help others to rejoice in it too. Well, God bless.